There were two more murders 15 miles away. When police arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines. We have a weird homicide. A scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird... Cup of murder. Some people do whatever it takes to get what they want, even if that means taking another person's life. On May 14, 1992, a woman was arrested for committing a crime that took the life of a 23-year-old mother of three, all to pay the price of some missing jewelry. So if you like your coffee hot but your bones chilled, sit back and start your day with a morning cup of murder. Irene Melanie May was living a rather rough life. The 23-year-old was addicted to meth, had her three children taken away, and found herself searching for a place to live after her husband was arrested and jailed. This is how she met fellow addict Carrie Dalton. The two women began living together in Carrie's Live Oak Springs, California home, and soon Melanie was introduced to Carrie's friends and fellow addicts. Together, the group lived a very unstable lifestyle, ruled by drugs and where they would get their next fix. And at some point, Carrie was arrested and served a short jail time for possession. While gone, Melanie continued her downward spiral and soon found herself without drugs or money. So she began selling some of the items in the home, including some of Carrie's belongings. When Carrie was released and arrived back home, she found that her stuff was missing. So during her next drug binge with her boyfriend, Mark Tompkins, the two began forming a plan for revenge. In the weeks before June 26, 1988, Melanie became afraid of her roommate. Carrie had become more hostile than usual and seemed to spat all of her venom at Melanie. All that anger and all that venom led up to a day in June when, high on drugs, Carrie forced Melanie into a chair inside of a woman named Joanne Fetter's trailer, tied her up, and began beating her. Mark Tompkins and another friend, a woman named Cheryl Baker, helped Carrie cut an extension cord to electrocute Melanie and continued to beat her so brutally with a frying pan that it broke into pieces. She was injected with battery acid from a car, hit, kicked, stabbed, and stomped on for hours until finally the 23-year-old mother succumbed to her torture and took her last breath, all for some stolen jewelry. That same night, just after the final blow, a local sheriff was called to Joanne's trailer on suspicion of burglary. When he arrived, he reported that Joanne was high on methamphetamine, therefore mentally incapable to comprehend reality, and that there was no evidence of a robbery or any other issues. What that officer didn't know was that a third person, a man only referred to as George, had disposed of Melanie May's body so well that, to this day, it's never been found. Three years passed and no one knew what happened to Melanie. That was until Cheryl Baker went to police with a story and a request for a lesser charge. On May 14, 1992, Carrie Dalton was arrested and charged with Melanie's murder, as were Mark Lee Tompkins and Cheryl Ann Baker. In July of 1993, Cheryl Ann pleaded guilty to second-degree murder, while Mark pled guilty to first. During Carrie's trial, which began in early 1995, her lawyers tried to argue that, with no body and only circumstantial evidence, Melanie's death was unsubstantiated, even claiming that she may be alive and well somewhere outside of California. The jury wasn't buying his plea, and on February 24, 1995, Carrie Lynn Dalton was found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder and murder and sentenced to death on May 23rd. Eventually, this sentence was changed to 25 years to life. Thank you for joining me in my morning cup of murder. Please join me again tomorrow to hear what terrible thing happened on May 15th. Don't forget to rate and subscribe and let me know how you like it. If you want to help support the podcast, there's always Patreon or just sharing it with your true crime obsessed friends. And remember, stay safe.